Making your first 3D game can be daunting. With the additional third axis, just trying to rotate your character can be a nightmare. In this video, you'll see how to create a third person character that moves relative to the camera and jumps. We'll also take a look at rotating the character model towards the direction of movement. There are two physics bodies we use to move objects in 3D, rigid body and kinematic body. Rigid bodies have realistic physics. They're quick to set up, but hard to master. Kinematic bodies give you more control, and they come with handy functions ideal for third-person movement. In a new scene, we create a kinematic body with a collision shape. We've added our own animated character to the scene, but you can use any model or mesh instance instead. Two common collision shapes for characters in 3D are capsules and cylinders. Capsules have no hard edges, making your character move smoothly on slopes and corners. A character with a capsule can run up small stairs, but it also slides off platforms when standing on edges. Cylinders can stay on edges, but their movement won't be nearly as smooth on uneven terrain and stairs. I recommend a capsule to get started. They're generally easier to use. With the collision shape selected, we add a capsule shape and rotate it to fit our character. We also reduce the shape radius to 0.5 to match our character better. In 3D, you need a camera to render the game world. To make the camera follow and orbit the character, we add a spring arm node to the player with a camera child. The spring arm constrains the camera to the player at a distance. It also makes the camera collide with the world, preventing it from getting inside walls. We'll get back to setting up the spring arm later when we rotate the camera. The next step is coding the character movement. We add a script to the kinematic body node. Kinematic body gives us the move and slide with snap function. It handles movement on slopes for us, keeping the character grounded while running. We start with variables for movement speed, jump strength, and gravity. The move and slide with snap function expects a velocity and a snap vector, so we define these two variables next. The snap vector points to the ground to ground our character. When jumping or falling, we turn off snapping by setting it to zero. We cache the player model and the spring arm into onready variables. In physics process, we start by calculating the player's desired direction. To get precise inputs on controllers while supporting keyboards, we use input get action strength. The left, forward, back, right, and jump input actions are defined in the project's input map. Now, because the camera can orbit around the character, we also need to rotate the input direction to match the camera's look direction. That way, the character always moves forward, back, or sideways. We rotate the move direction by the spring arm's Y rotation. This makes the move direction relative to the camera. We normalize the move direction so going diagonally doesn't make us go faster. We use the direction to set the velocity variable on the ground. Every frame, we also want to pull the velocity down using gravity. Applying gravity lets us detect when the character is on the floor using the isOnFloor function. We can use the snap vector and isOnFloor to check if we just landed. If the character is on the floor and the player presses jump, then they're jumping. Jumping should have priority, so we set the Y velocity to jump strength and we zero out the snap vector to turn off snapping. When landing, we point the snap vector down to snap the character to the ground. Next, we use the velocity and snap vector in a call to move and slide with snap. This function needs our velocity, snap vector, and the up direction. We also tell it to stop on slopes without sliding down. The function returns an updated velocity that takes collisions into account, resetting the y velocity to zero when landing. We store this value in our velocity variable. Before moving on to the camera script, in process, we update the spring arm to move with the character every frame. You'll see why shortly. Now we've got code to move relative to the camera, but the camera doesn't rotate yet. First, we set the spring arm's properties. The spring length controls how far the camera moves away from the character. You also want to increase the margin to 0.2 or larger to give the camera more room to collide. The 0.01 default tends to clip inside walls. Next, we attach a new script to the spring arm node to control the rotation. We add an exported variable for rotation speed. By calling set as top level true in the ready function, the camera can move independently from the character. It won't inherit its position, rotation, or scale. That's why we added a line in the character script to reposition the camera every frame. We capture the mouse cursor inside the window by calling input set mouse mode. This hides and locks the cursor to the game window. You can release the mouse by passing a different mode instead. In unhandled input, we check if the event is mouse movement before continuing. Moving the mouse up and down on the screen pitches the camera up and down. Left and right mouse movement rotates the camera around the y-axis. The clamp function prevents the camera from rolling over. You can change the degree amounts here to limit the camera's pitch. 
Meanwhile, the wrap f function makes the angle wrap between 0 and 360 degrees, so the rotation doesn't accumulate. Finally, we want to rotate the character model to match its movement. Back in the character script, we check the velocity length first so we don't face forward when we stop moving. Then, we store the velocity z and x in a vector 2 as our look direction. I know, it looks backwards, trust me. We need the opposite of what it normally returns here. Finally, we set the model's y rotation to the look direction angle. The angle function turns a vector 2 into radians. We assign this to the rotation y property so it faces the angle of movement. And there you have it, a 3D platformer character with a rotating player model and camera. We're making a course to teach you and people you love how to make games from absolutely zero with Godot. Along with the course, we're developing a free and open source app that'll help everyone practice code right in their browser. We're on Kickstarter to make this project a reality. You can get the course at half the final price, but be quick because the campaign ends on October 31st. Check out the link in the description to get all the details. Be creative, have fun, and we hope to see you again in the next one.